Here's the first video in a series of optimization problem videos I'm going to do for the calculus course. This, is, this video is just going to go through one example, but uh, the series of videos is going to look at how we're going to use our knowledge of derivatives to be able to optimize measurements with different application questions. So here we go. Here's our, here's our example for this video. A cardboard box with a square base is to have a volume of 8 liters, which would be 8,000 centimeters cubed. We want to find the dimensions that will minimize the amount of cardboard to be used. What is the minimum surface area? We're interested in minimizing the surface area for some type of box. And what do we know about the box? We know two things. Uh, it has a square base, which means if we look at our dimensions here, the length and the width are equivalent to each other. So I'm actually going to call both of those x. So the length and width, I'm going to make both of those x. We know it's a square base, so the length and width are equal to each other. So we know it's a square base, we know it has a volume of 8,000 centimeters cubed, and we're interested in minimizing the surface area. Uh, what do we know about surface area for uh, this type of rectangular prism? We know a surface area is equal to the sum of the areas of the sides. So for any general rectangular prism, this is what the formula would look like. 2 times length width plus 2 times length height plus 2 times width height. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to replace each length and width with x because we know that they're both equal to each other. So surface area is equal to uh, <coughs> 2xx, so 2x squared, plus 2xh, plus another 2xh. So surface area equals 2x squared plus 4xh. And I'm interested in figuring out how can this surface area be at, an, at, at a minimum while keeping the volume at 8,000 centimeters cubed. So what we need to do is come up with a surface area equation that only has one variable, where that surface area equation is calculating the surface area for the given volume of 8,000 centimeters cubed. So what we're going to have to do is, right now this surface area equation is written in terms of x and h. It's written in terms of the length and width and the height. We want to write it just in terms of one variable, so just in terms of the length, so just in terms of x. So I need to come up with an expression for h written in terms of x while keeping in mind that we know the volume has to be 8,000 centimeters cubed. So our volume I know is 8,000 centimeters cubed. Oh, and I should remind you, volume of any prism is area base times height. So in this case, the area of our base is length times width, so x times x, so x squared times our height. And we know that volume is 8,000 centimeters cubed. And if we want to come up with an expression for h written in terms of x, we would just divide the x squared to the other side. h equals 8,000 over x squared. And now what we can do, we've come up with an expression that would calculate the height for any given value of the length while keeping the volume at 8,000 with keeping the volume at 8,000 centimeters cubed. So let me give you a vi visual demonstration of what I'm talking about here. So what I want you to notice here is that uh, the length and width we can vary. The length and width currently are at 15.1. And as I vary the length and width, the height adjusts accordingly, according to this rule we have set here. Height equals 8,000 over x squared. So notice as I adjust the length and width, the height is adjusting accordingly. accordingly. And the volume is holding steady at 8,000, but the surface area is changing. And we're interested in how can we optimize the surface area. In this case, optimizing surface area would mean making the surface area as small as possible. So let's take a look at when the length and width are very small. So let's set the length and width very small to like 6. Notice the height is huge and the surface area is over 5,000. As we increase the length and the width, that surface area is decreasing. It's down to just on above 3,000. Now it's below 3,000. It's at 2,700. And after a certain point, that surface area is going to start going back up again. Now it's back above 3,000, back above 4,000. So there's some optimal length and width, which I'm varying here, and the height is adjusting accordingly based on our formula here. There is some optimal length, width, and height that are going to keep this surface area at a minimum while maintaining the exact same volume. So that's our goal is to figure that out. So what we're going to do back over here is we are going to, now that we figured out that the height is equal to 8,000 8, over x squared for this very specific square based prism that has that fixed volume, I can replace the height in this equation with 
8,000 over x squared. So now I'm writing the surface area in terms of x only. So I can write surface area at x equals 2x squared plus 4x 8,000 over x squared. And then we can do a little bit of simplifying with this formula. Surface area at x equals 2x squared. And then I can get rid of that x with one of those. And then what I have left is 4 times 8,000, that's 32,000, 2, 3, over x. But instead of writing over x, since I'm going to want to differentiate this, I'm going to bring that power of x up into the numerator and just change the exponent to negative 1. So there is the formula that would calculate the surface area of a square-based prism that has a volume of 8,000 centimeters cubed for any length width that I want. So I can vary the length and the width and see what the surface area becomes. And so let me just show you what this function looks like in Desmos as well. So this function in Desmos, I've graphed that exact function. So notice as I'm varying the length and the width, um, <coughs> we're getting different values of surface area. So when the length and width are 4, the surface area is 8,000. As I make the length and width bigger, there comes to some point when we're at a minimum surface area. How are we going to find that point without a graph? What we're looking for, when I get to the min point, what do you notice about the value of the derivative? The value of the derivative at the min point is 0. So I want to be able to figure out when is the derivative have a value of 0, and then that will tell me when we are at a min or a max point. We will use the second derivative test to verify it's a min point, because if you look at the second derivative, it's positive there, so I know the function is concave up at that point, therefore it must be a min. But we'll go through all this without a graph, but I just wanted you to see the visual representation of what we want. So we're going to want to find the critical numbers of this function. Right? We want to find the point that has a horizontal tangent, because that might be a min or a max point. And we're interested in finding the min surface area. So let's start by finding the derivative. Surface area prime of x equals 4x minus 32,000 x to the negative 2. And then we're interested in solving for when is this equal to 0, so we can find our possible min or max point. Uh, and it would be undefined when x is 0, um, but we know we're not going to have a length and width of 0 because then the box doesn't exist. So we don't have to worry about that critical number. So 0 equals 4x minus, I'm going to write this as 32,000 over x squared, and then we'll solve this. So I'll move the 32,000 over x squared to the left, and then I'm going to multiply the x squared over, so I get 32,000 equals 4x times x squared, that's 4x cubed, and then I'm going to divide the 4, get 8,000 equals x cubed, and then to isolate the x, to move a cubed over, at cube over I would have to do cubed root of 8,000, right? So I have to do 8,000 to the power of a third, and that's going to give me 20. So that tells me at an x value of 20, so at a length and width of 20, there is a, either a max or a min surface area. I want to verify that this is giving me what I want. I want to try and find the minimum surface area, correct? So let's have a quick look at what the second derivative would be. Right? We could, could use the first or the second derivative test. I'm going to do the second derivative test. So second derivative test. So I need to calculate the second derivative. So I'm going to differentiate this function here. Here's my first derivative. So it would be 4 plus 64,000 x to the negative 3. And if I plug 20 into this, the second derivative at an x value of 20, if I plug 20 in for x into this function, uh, I actually get 12. And we saw that on the Desmos graph as well, right? When I plugged 20 into the second derivative, it gave me 12. So I don't necessarily care that it's 12. What I do care about is that since the surface area, uh, the second derivative of the surface area at a length and width of 20 is positive, that's all I care about is that it's positive. I don't care that it's 12, I care that it's positive. That tells me that the surface area at 20 is concave up. Therefore, uh, therefore at the point, at an x value of 20, there's a, there's a min point, right? Concave up means it looks like this, which means we have a min point. Therefore, min point at 20, and then whatever the surface area at 20 is. We could plug that into the original function to figure it out, and I already have that on Desmos here. The surface area at 20 is 2,400. So our minimum surface area, therefore, 
min surface area is 2,400 centimeters square. And what dimensions accomplish this? When length is 20, width is 20, and height, remember how do we calculate the height? The height is equal to 8,000 over x squared. So 8,000 over 20 squared. So we've got 8,000 over 400, that's 20. So the height is 20. So this is actually a cube. It turns out, it turns out a cube, right? Length with my L being equal, it's what's going to minimize the surface area for a given volume. So that's our first optimization problem done. So just a reminder of what we did. From the given information, we find out what we want to optimize. We want to optimize surface area. So we try and come up with a surface area equation written in terms of one variable. And you'll have to be given some other information to be able to replace everything in the surface area formula to be written in terms of one variable, right? We had to replace this h uh, with a function of x by using what the equation told us about the volume. So we replaced that h with what we knew h was equal to in terms of x. And then we have an equation written in terms of one variable. We can find its derivative, find its critical numbers, and then test those critical numbers to see if they are max or min points. And I decided to do the second derivative test, but you could have done first derivative test and made a sign chart to figure out that the function was decreasing before that x value and increasing after, which will then tell you also that it's a min point. Okay, so the next optimization problem I'm going to do in the next video. I'm going to do one about a cylinder and then I'll also do a distance one as well. So make sure you've subscribed. Uh, go to jensenmath.ca as well so you can get some more practice problems and actually try some of these on your own. Uh, but yeah, make sure you subscribe so that you can get notifications about when the, when the next videos in the series come out.